Hi, in this video we take a purely visual look at vector addition using the tip-to-tail rule. At this stage we won't apply any mathematics. In fact, this rule is not one we'll be using much at all for calculations, yet it is very important that you be familiar with this rule, as very often it will be used to get a visual understanding of a situation involving vectors. Here we see two vectors. To add them, we simply attach the tip of one vector to the tail of the other. The resultant vector runs from the tail of the first to the tip of the second. So, let's suppose we want to add vectors A and B. I simply attach the tip of vector A to the tail of vector B. Just ignore the little pop-ups. We'll explain that later on as we learn the application I'm using. So now we want the sum of vector A and B. And here we have the result of adding vectors A and B. Pay very close attention to this. The length of this resultant is not equal to the length of these vectors. So this is something very peculiar about vector addition. The length of the resultant is not necessarily equal to the length, the sum of the lengths of the vectors that you add. Now note that um, vector addition is commutative. Instead of saying a plus b, I could, also say, say, I could also say b plus a. So I could switch these around. And note I get the same result. b plus a is the same as a plus b. To add three or more vectors, we just do the same. We daisy chain the vectors tip to tail, and the resultant of the addition of these three vectors goes from the tail of the first to the tip of the last. So if we daisy chain these three vectors tip to tail, we should end up with something like this. And the resultant, the sum of these three vectors, is a vector that runs from the tail of the first to the tip of the last. And here we have it. Again note, the length of this vector is not equal to the sum of the lengths of these three vectors. So vector addition is a bit more complicated than scalar addition. Of course vector addition is commutative, so I could have added these as c plus a plus b. So let's see that. And here we have it, c plus a plus b gives me the vector sum of those three vectors. So I could have written here c plus a plus b, which as we know is going to be equal to a plus b plus c. So this brings us to the end of our little look at vector addition using the tip to tail rule. Again, as I've stated, we won't be using this method for calculations, but it is very handy when it comes to explaining certain phenomena involving vectors. And so we will be using it, just that we won't be using it in calculations necessarily. When it comes to doing calculations, we will use the method of vector components, which we will look at shortly. Anyway, bye for now.